Valve has been killing it. All right, maybe not with everything, but you know what they say. It's not what have you done for me, but what have you done for me lately. So let's take a look at all the cool updates, fixes and changes Valve has made in the last few months. Something that's long since bothered me, and this is especially bad with Nintendo on the Switch, but Valve's not perfect either. Say you're traveling, you get to the airport, work your way through security, an hour later you're finally boarding, and another 30 minutes, exhausted but happy, you plop down in your seat. After getting everything arranged, it's finally time to get that Steam Deck booted up and start your game. And the first thing you see is, this is a problem sharing games between multiple consoles in a family. And Valve just took a massive step forward in solving this problem with the introduction of Steam Families, an overhaul of its family sharing system. Here's what you need to know. You can now share your library with five other people in your family and no limits on the number of devices. What's even better is that you can now play games from the same library at the same time as long as it's not the same game but it gets even better all of this is now possible in offline mode as well and this is all still in the beta channel by the way but it's very simple to set up Some not so good news for Valve, and in my opinion, not good for anyone. Remember that lawsuit in 2022 accusing Sony of abusing its market power? That same company is now coming after Valve and accusing them of deliberately shutting out competition through Steam. And I have to say, I'm with Valve on this one. And before we take a look at the big SteamOS update that just came out on the preview channel, we've had some amazing game releases in the last couple of months. Here's Steam Deck's most played of May 24. The most notable new entry on number one is of course Hades 2. I haven't picked this one up myself just yet, mostly because this is still in early access and I just want the full experience when I find Finally pick it up but by all accounts this is already amazing and runs great on the steam deck funny enough hades 1 is right below it on number four another notable new entry is diablo 4 possibly due to the new season having just started which reminds me to finally get going on this game myself and then an especially impressive entry created by a solo developer is animal world a new pixel art survival horror puzzle game that came out of nowhere and reviewed very well the atmosphere of this game looks amazing and this type of metroidvania plays very well on the steam deck then the last new entry is ghost of tsushima i did a performance review on this one early may and and this runs great on the Steam Deck. This is one of the most beautiful PS4 games and it's amazing that we can play something like this on the go. Also, it's just fun to play a badass samurai. Side note, this is marked as Steam Deck incompatible because of the PSN multiplayer requirements, but for single player, this is perfectly playable without it. And since we're on the topic of gaming, both Xbox and PlayStation had their showcases. PlayStation revealed that God of War Ragnarok is finally coming to PC, which is great news except for one big caveat. The game will be coming on September 19, 2024, almost two years after it originally released. Porting will be done by the original studio that ported God of War 2016. So far, so good. The problem comes in the form of the PSN account requirements, meaning this game might be completely unplayable in certain countries. I'm still holding out hope that the PSN requirement is only for a multiplayer component, similar to Ghost of Tsushima, but we'll have to see. And then there was Xbox. They've had their share of problems this year, but I think everybody has to agree this was a great showcase for them. Among other things, they announced a new Doom that looks amazing and somehow even more badass than the prior entries. Gears of War E-Day looks super cool, a prequel to the franchise that shows what happens during the initial invasion. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle seems to perfectly hit that movie atmosphere and I can't wait to pick this up. State of Decay 3 is always a good zombie shooting time. Starfield got its first big DLC announced, Shattered Space, so <laughs> we'll have to see how that comes out. And then there was of course, Perfect Dark. This looks so amazing. It's been so long since we've had an actual good spy thriller video game. This will definitely be a day one pickup for me. And since it's Xbox, most, if not all of these games will be coming to PC. All right, bring it back to the Steam Deck itself. It's been a while since we had a large SteamOS update, but OS 3.6 finally went live on the preview channel, and it's a big one with some very exciting updates. Something I've always wanted and makes the whole PC as a console experience a little more real for me. PlayStation, Microsoft, and even Nintendo with the Switch have had this for years. And finally, we'll also be able to wake up our TVs and change its inputs with our Steam Deck when docked. Valve has now added HDMI CEC features that make this possible. I myself haven't been able to get this working yet, but it's on the way and I'm excited for it. I enjoy the little things in life, you know? With OS 3.6, SteamOS is also moving to a new version of Linux, Arch Linux 6.5 and Mesa 24.1. This is the open source graphics stack it uses. I'm not exactly sure what all of this means since I'm not a Linux guy. I've played around with it for a bit and it all seems a bit speedier, especially the operating system, but it's hard to tell. I'll have to do a bit more testing on this, but there's a lot more. The magnifying scale can now be manually set somewhere between 120 and 300%. And here it is. There is now a control to manually adjust the brightness of, are you sitting down? The power LED. Oh yeah, Bluetooth has been updated to show battery levels of connected devices, as well as Bluetooth connectivity improvements, and another interesting one. 
Did you see that? This is something I never heard of, but it's called the Mura effect, which shows an unevenness in the screen. This can be caused by a number of things, like stress on the screen, backlight issues, or sometimes even manufacturing, and it can't really be fixed. But Valve, in all their brilliance, have rolled out a Mura compensation feature with this latest update. I'm actually curious to hear if you've had any problems with this. Apparently every screen has some of this, but I don't really notice it in mine. <sighs> Another big feature that 3.6 added is a pretty cool one, but I'm too chicken to try it out. So when Valve added the easy overclock option from your BIOS, I was both tempted and had it would be nice to get just a little bit more oomph out of your deck, at the cost of battery life of course. But this thing gets hot, and I can only imagine what happens when you push it past its design limits. In case you're curious, getting to the BIOS is easy. Hold the plus and power button, then set up, into advanced and scroll down to the GPU, CPU and SOC voltage offsets. It's as easy as that. You have to hand it to Valve, they are very accommodating when it comes to blowing up your Steam Deck. Speaking of blowing up your deck, this next one is for everybody who's tired of this anti-cheat nonsense that doesn't work with Steam Deck. <laughs> Not sure about that segue. Anyway, in case you don't know, games like Call of Duty that use an anti-cheat system don't work well with Linux and thus the Steam Deck operating system. And before you get too excited, Valve hasn't actually fixed this issue, but they've done pretty much the next best thing. They've improved the ability to dual boot from an SD card. Before this update, to boot into Windows, you'd have to manually go into the BIOS to start Windows from there. Now, leaving the SD card with Windows installed will boot it straight from there. Nothing big or groundbreaking, but again, it makes things just a little bit better and easier. A couple more small news stories. Currently, to record directly from your Steam Deck, you'll have to use something like Decky Recorder, a third-party plugin that's relatively easy to install, but doesn't always work the best. But these problems might soon be over. As the rumor goes, Valve is actually developing its own screen recording functionality, including a cool background record feature that lets you save screen recordings as far back as five minutes. Of course, we can't just have positive news, so here's something a little disappointing. A relatively recent trend we've been seeing in gaming is the rise of the Deluxe Early Access Edition. Basically, you pay extra to get the game three days early. More and more companies are doing this, and Valve has changed its refund policy to reflect this. In short, the official release date of a game is no longer its actual release date, but has now been shifted to be its early access release date. Valve's refund policy itself hasn't changed, and you can still get your refund within the two hour window it has always been. But I think you can probably see the loophole here and why they've shifted the release date window. That loophole is now closed. This change, however, is not why people are upset. It's the fact that Valve just legitimized this early access nonsense that AAA companies have been getting away with. But not to end on this sour note, here's some good news. The Steam Deck Summer Sale will be starting on June 27th. Get ready for some amazing deals, and I'm sure I'll be making some videos. That's about it. Let me know what you think of all the deals and news and stuff, and check here for my six-month Steam Deck OLED review, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one.